Information systems, archaeological information systems, uh, remote sensing, um, and that's why I work mainly on the archaeological map of Bulgaria. We were part of Ariadne first, and now we are part of Ariadne Plus. And I want to share our experience in Ariadne and how useful our participation was during the four years. So, first of all, what was the situation before Ariadne? Uh, we have the National Archaeological Information System called the Archaeological Map of Bulgaria. Uh, it's a national system at a national level and it um, contains data and information for archaeological sites registered on the territory of the whole country. And um, until now, we have 22,000 sites registered there. Of course, we know that there are much more, but the ones in the system are uh, at this number. And um, it's, uh, it has a special decree by the Ministry of Culture. So we are like it's legislated in the country. Uh, so, it is developed for the needs of the archaeologists, it's a sites and monuments based, it contains lots of legacy data from the 70s and 80s, uh, and uh, it, uh, when it was created as an information system, it, con it contained also controlled vocabulary, and this is part of the legacy data that we have one registration card for one site, uh, a site, of course, lots of different definitions for sites. Uh, as you know, a lot of, uh, it was accepted for sites in uh, the information system. It's a place, a topographic place, where uh, traces of human activities, past human activities, have been registered. So, Yeah, without GPS coordinates first from the 80s, with uh, maps for um, the position of the sites, uh, and uh, the most important things with control vocabulary finds and facilities and type and chronology of the site. Through Ariadne, between 2013 and 2017, We, we were able to, um, to give coordinates to these sites, uh, all of the sites uh, without visiting them, um, like in the field, of course, because we don't have the resources for that, but uh, using topographic maps and GIS, and we were able to uh, give them some localization with, of course, uh, with, um, mm, they were not precise, of course, so we had have, we have these uh, tables where we wrote how precise the coordinates were according to us. So that in future, when someone does a field survey, they know, for example, yes, this site was localized using topographic map or it was just localized because of some description, which is not very precise. Uh, what we could also do through Ariadne was that, sorry, I think I missed, no, I didn't. So we mapped our, as you heard in the morning many times, we mapped our terms, our vocabulary to, uh, 
chronology to period O, uh, with of course Iron Age, what Iron Age means for Bulgaria, so that it's clear, and with absolute, almost absolute uh, dates. We were also able to uh, map our uh, information system to a Ariane Capital Data Model, site type chronology findings and facilities to a TGT vocabulary using simple knowledge organization system. We use this in, um, we map this through Excel tables, but now it's better when there is this mapping too that the other partners can use. Uh, and this export was in XML and XSD format. These are the tables that we used for the mapping to get AAT. And uh, in Ariane portal, uh, we have uh, uh, one record for the whole system and uh, other records for different sites with more information and data about them in English. For example, this is one fortress that has lots and lots of different periods and chronologies and different findings. And you can find it in the area of the portal as a child of archaeological map. Okay, uh, so it was really helpful for us, not only because of all the things that you can read, the mapping, the data set publication, translation in English, geographic location, but also to train young colleagues and archaeologists of the importance of data standardization and of data sharing and to overcome incompleteness and isolation in some way. Uh, we do lots of rescue fieldwork activities um, in Bulgaria through transport and gas pipeline infrastructure projects and different concession areas <coughs> and all this data that we gather systematically, it goes to the archaeological map and uh, through a project uh, from another project, we were able to do more field surveys. Uh, some part was covered by airborne laser scanning, and uh, we created geographic information system, archaeological map of Bulgaria, which also contains web and mobile applications and different layers that are useful for us. Uh, tomorrow, I'll have a presentation for the mobile application in another session, and I will talk more about this. This is part of the project that we did in 2017 and 18 in different parts of the country. We also do lots of scientific fieldwork activities and they also, the data from them, uh, the non-destructive ones, of course, uh, goes to the system. And uh, in Ariane Plus, we continue our work because it not finished, and um, uh, the migration of data from older system to the new system based on uh, open layers and open source products only. This is its architecture, just a brief overview, that we wanted to create something open source. And it's still under development and testing. It, it's used for documenting, managing, and analyzing landscape data. It has wider access and it has, of course, some additional data that is useful for all the archaeologists working in Bulgaria. It's based on not only on archaeological sites, but on geospatial feature as a unit containing predefined or controlled. Uh, fields with um, specific data in them. And as I said, data standardization, which is dynamic and you can change it 
whatever we want, and it will <coughs> be uh, affected also in the mobile application. Some of the predefined values that we use for covering area during intensive surveys, also standardized in all the rescue field work activities I said about transport and pipeline infrastructures. And it's, yeah, we will continue keeping the work and especially trying to uh, gather as many Bulgarian archaeologists as we can to to continue the idea. Thank you.